So you're dieting. You're trying to get shredded for summer, get that summer beach body. Or maybe you're just trying to see your abs for the first time. You've never known what it's like to be lean, to have six pack abs. You've already got a diet plan. You're invested in it, you're following it, but it feels super restrictive. How many lunches, dinners, or special social events have you had to turn down because you're following a diet? But what if I told you that you can eat out and still stick to and follow your diet? Hi. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Matty and I'm a male model, physiotherapist and fitness enthusiast. In this video, I will be sharing with you how I was able to eat out multiple times a week and yet stick to and follow my diet. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. Step number one is that not all foods are equal. If you go to eat out at Five Guys and you go and eat out at Chipotle, of course, chipotle, which is essentially chicken, rice, vegetables, salad, some salsa, that is going to be a lot more macro friendly and calorie friendly to your diet plan than Five Guys, which is delicious by the way, but unfortunately the fat macros are very, very high as are the calories. Or another example would be Leon or Chick-fil-A, which is a slightly healthier fast food joint. We don't have Chick-fil-A's here in the UK, unfortunately, but I've been told by all my American friends that Chick-fil-A is amazing and it's relatively healthy and macro-friendly fast food. People can diet on Chick-fil-A, but it's very hard to diet on something like KFC or Popeyes because the chicken is fried, battered, and loads of oil. The fat macros are gonna be off, the calories are gonna be off. This shows you how important food selection is. Have a think about what you're ordering in the restaurant. If you're going out for lunch, then you might choose to have grilled chicken breast as opposed to that breaded chicken fillet, as opposed to that burger or that battered cod and chips. The second step is that it's impossible to accurately, exactly measure your calories when you eat out. You can bring a weighing scale to the restaurant. I feel like this can be a bit unnecessary unless you're on specific bodybuilder diet prep and you have no other choice. This is getting to the point where you're being neurotic about it. You don't need to go that far. What you can do is guesstimate calories. It's always better to overestimate carbs and fats, but underestimate protein when you eat out. Know that when you're going to a restaurant to eat, the cooks, the chefs, the people who work in the restaurant, they don't care about your macros. It doesn't matter to them. What matters to them is whether your food tastes nice. So they're going to put salt in there, which the next day is going to leave you feeling a bit bloated or looking a bit bloated. They're going to put extra fat in there. There's going to be extra oil, carbs, and they're probably going to skimp out on the protein portion. A good example of this is when I went to Italy for the first time in 2019. And when I was in a restaurant in Pisa, I ordered a lobster spaghetti and I should have ordered a seafood spaghetti because when I got to the lobster spaghetti, there was no lobster in it. It was spaghetti and a piece of the head of the lobster head. There was virtually no lobster meat and it was a complete joke. Most restaurants will give you a piece of lobster, so don't you worry about it. But that just highlights to an extreme that restaurants aren't gonna give you protein. They're gonna try and skimp out on the protein and give you more carbs and fat. The third step is to save your calories for later on in the day. Of course, if you're going out for lunch, then you might choose to fast intermittently and not eat breakfast. I have been following intermittent fasting for the past eight years and it's been working really well for me, especially when I'm on a diet because I have more calories to play around with later on in the day when my willpower battery has gone down the drain a little bit. So if you do eat out for lunch, that's okay. Just acknowledge that you're gonna to have to be a bit more restrictive with your lunch portions because you gotta remember that you need calories later on for dinner. If you go out for lunch, you might have a steak and a salad. If you go out for dinner and you've saved up a lot of calories throughout the day because you have had no breakfast and you've had a really small lunch, which is high in protein and low in carbs and fats. So you basically have had chicken and a salad earlier on in the day then that leaves you with a lot more calories to play around with. You have a lot more carbs, a lot more fats, and of course you still wanna hit your protein as well. So you might have a steak or two steaks and a double portion of chips with salad and vegetables for dinner. If you have room in your calories, you might even get to have a bit of dessert as well. But ultimately what you've got to remember is calories in, 
must be less than calories out. If you want to get shredded, if you want to lose weight, if you want to put yourself in a caloric deficit. That's what a lot of people forget. They think that just because they do intermittent fasting or they skip the first meal, they can eat how they like for the rest of the day. And in most cases, it kind of does work because you're skipping out a whole meal. You're more likely to be able to keep a caloric deficit because you're not eating the three meals a day. But you still got to count your calories. This is why I love intermittent fasting, saving your calories for later on in the day, saving up your carbs and fats for later on in the day when you know you're going to have no choice but to eat more. That is probably the most important step today. Step number four is to train. Strength train, resistance train before you go out for the meal. So let's say you're going out for dinner, you know you're going out for dinner at 8 p.m. Make sure that you've trained from about 5 or 6 p.m. to about 7 or whatever and you've done your workout and you've really pushed yourself hard because then you've depleted your glycogen stores in your muscles. So when you go out for dinner and you have that high carbohydrate dense meal with a little bit of protein and fat, it's gonna spike your insulin and all those calories that you've just ingested are gonna go into restoring your muscle glycogen. Insulin is an anabolic hormone, but it does not discriminate between fat and muscle. If you get a massive insulin spike after eating a big meal when you go out for dinner and you've done this after a workout when you're most insulin sensitive, then most of these calories are going to be stored as muscle glycogen, which is what you want. You're making good use of those calories. Well done, sir. Step number five is to drink plenty of water before you eat out at the restaurant, during your meal at the restaurant, and after your meal at the restaurant. I recommend a glass before, a glass during, and a glass after. Now this will help the food expand in your stomach and you'll feel more full. It also flushes out that extra sodium or MSG, monosodium glutamate, which the restaurant has added into your foods to make them taste nice. A bonus step because you've stayed all the way to the end is to not sweat it. You're going out, you're enjoying your life, you're having a nice meal. Ultimately, fitness shouldn't be your life. It should enhance your life. So don't sweat it. If you go out for a meal, enjoy yourself. Obviously follow these tips, don't go overboard, but if you do it correctly and you follow what I say, then you will likely be able to stick to your diet and enjoy eating out. I hope these tips have helped you. If they have, then that's awesome. I will see you guys in the next one. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town I'm searching for the lost and found